So we left off the last video at the point where we had calculated our decade groups and our decade averages, except not as averages, as sums and counts. And so for every decade, for every data series, we have this information. But what we want is we want to find the decade with the highest actual average as opposed to just a sum and a count. So in order to do that, I kind of need to regroup the data. We could do this in two, in two passes. I could do a separate map values here just to get the actual averages. I guess in some ways it would make sense for that to happen right here so that the decade averages is actually a decade averages. Um, I'm going to go instead of the case, I'm going to go with a tuple here. So t dot underscore one divided by t dot underscore two should map all of our values oh, plural should map all of our values down to doubles. And so if I were to rerun this, we'd get average values there. Okay, but I'm not going to yet. Because the next thing that we need to do is we kind of need to collect things by series so that we have decade and average. Now, I'm going to do this in two steps. The first one, and let's see, um, yeah, I'll, I'll just start typing things. We'll decide a name for it later. So we'll take our decade averages, and I am going to remap it. Now, so the map values here, this was a very efficient operation because I didn't change the keys and things are partitioned based upon those keys. So most likely this did all of its work on each executor, uh, executor <coughs> individually and they didn't have to communicate with each other. This should have been very low network communication. This next operation though is going to be an expensive operation. It's gonna have to shuffle values around and the reason is because I am changing the key. I want this new collection to only have that first element as the key, not the decade, uh, because that's significant for my next step. So this is a two tuple followed by a double here. Um, our two tuple is the ID and the decade, and the value that we have after it is a double, which is the quotient of those two values is our average and I want to spit out a tuple that just has the ID as the key and then the decade and the average as the values here. Okay, once I have that now I need to decide exactly how I want um, to do this. My next step, and let's go look at the API because that will probably be helpful to us here. My next step is to take each of, so each one of these stations is probably going to have something on the order of five different uh, pairs associated with it because there are five decades. And so we'll get the five decades with their five different averages. And what I am interested in, for example, was I wanted the ones where the maximum value happened in I don't know, some, some decade. Uh, so how could I do that? Well, what I need to do is somehow get together, I'd kind of actually like to have both the, the average and the decade in this. Uh, if we were to I'm looking for a, I don't need to group with at this point, and I could just do an aggregate by key again. I could also do a group by key and then map that. The aggregate by key is probably the more efficient approach. So let's go ahead and do another aggregate by key. And let's, I'll just go ahead and put this whoop, on the next line aggregate by key. So what are we producing here? For every key, which is just the decade 
and the average. Uh, actually, I don't even need to aggregate this, right? I could fold by key because I'm going to spit out the type that is a decade and average, but I only want to keep the one that was the max. Sure. Uh, in fact, can I go all the way to a reduce by key? So a fold by key, I'm stuck with my single type here and my single function, but I don't even need a zero in this. Uh, in fact, a zero doesn't make sense. So because I don't have a zero, I could even do this with a reduce by key where all I pass in is a function. It's helpful to think about your problem and figure out what, your, what the simplest method that you could use to do things. So this is going to basically get two of these tuples, a decade and an average, and I want to give back the one that has the uh, highest average. We could write this in a number of different ways. As you've seen, I'm actually reasonably fond of this case notation because this is going to take two arguments, each of which is a tuple, a decade one and an average one, and then a decade two and an average two. And if average one is greater than or equal to average two, then I want to give back the tuple D1, A1. Else, I want to give back D2, A2. And close that off. We should find a good name for this. So after this point, this should be something like max decade. Okay, so now we have this is an RDD on string, which is just the series, and the int and the double, which is the maximum decade and its average. At this point, I'm kind of actually interested in seeing what these are, because I have one per series. So I'd like to create an RDD that has these along with their series name. And in some ways, this whole, we've done several videos now that are aimed at doing joins. Now I'm ready to do a join. So we already have our series data here, but in order to do a join, I need two things on pairs. So I'm going to make a new RDD, I'll call it, as you can see, I called it series pairs, that is series mapped so that for each series, I want to take its ID as the key and then the series as the value. Actually, for this case, I don't really need the whole thing. I'll just go with the series, I think what's it called, title? Yeah, because I'm not gonna print out all the other information. So this is an RDD of string string where I have my IDs and my titles. Every ID should appear exactly once in this data set, uh, which is nice, that way our join isn't going to grow exponentially. And this key here of that ID is the same key here of our max decades. So joined max decades is just going to be, I'm going to start actually with series pairs dot join of max decade. And this gives me back a, an RDD from string to string int double. So our join here should give us back a two tuple. I'm actually a little bit unhappy about the type this is giving me. An RDD of string, string int double. Let's just look at the beginning of that. So joined max decades, take, I'll take 10 for each print line. And let's run this to see what information we have. Note that for the purposes of this video, I didn't print a lot of these intermediate steps, but if I were really working with this data, I probably would 
to make sure that I know what data I'm holding at any given point in time. Okay, so I actually saw some red text. Uh, Manage memory leak detected. Okay, I'm not going to worry about that one. So, yes. So what we got out of here is for this is the series code. This is its title. So for Roseville City, uh, Minnesota. In the now this you have to remember we divided by ten and I never did bother multiplying by ten. It actually would have been pretty easy. Up. Where would, did we do this? When we regroup these, I could have taken the decade and multiplied by 10 again so that this would be 2010 and then we'd have you know 1970 and whatnot. Uh, probably just for interpretation reasons worth doing there. Uh, so for the 2010 decade, the unemployment rate was that and that was the highest decade. Uh, so we can see all the different places, the different series here, where we had you know, various unemployment, uh, maximum unemployment rates in different decades. And so it would be interesting to kind of look at the percentages if we had information, which this data set doesn't, on where these are located, look at kind of a spatial distribution of what areas in the state had the highest unemployment at, at different points in time. So those are some things that we could do further, but our goal here was to show that we could use this join to bring together the information from one data series that we had and mix it with some analysis that we've done out of another data series.